Wait here. Lord Commander. Well? The king is not in his tent. Not in his tent? No, sir. Well, it must be somewhere. Have you searched the camp? Yes, sir. I brought the aid you assigned to him. I think the man knows something. That is the man, sir. You were assigned to attend the king? Yes, sir. Where did he go? Sir, I, I, I cannot tell you. As your commander, I order you to tell me. The king pledged me to silence. Where is he? He went with a scouting party. Scouting party? What scouting party? Every night, so we send out small patrols to test the walls of the city. And tonight? Tonight, the waterway under the north wall. A patrol of 20 men under Captain Uriah. You let him go? I could not stop him, sir. We had finished the dispatches. The king stood in the mouth of the tent as the patrol went by. He looked after them, and suddenly he took up a sword and followed them. Take a hundred of your best men and go after them. Sir. To arms, men! King. Fire a hundred! To arms! King of all Israel, out there in the darkness, exposing himself to the enemy. Crawling on his belly like a common soldier. The army, my order. Yes, I know. We'll speak of it later. Come in, you. I apologize for delaying your supper. Sit down, Uriah. Pour us some wine. Sit down. Uh, sire, hmm? you're wounded. Let me call the physician. No, no, let it alone. It's a long time since I've shed any blood. It's good to have proof that it still runs in my veins. Sit down, George. We must decide on our strategy. The rabbi is well defended. Unfortunately, there are no Joshua's among us to command the walls to fall down. What would you do, Uriah? I can speak for the men, sir. Every man in the army would be glad to die for David. A thousand dead, perhaps two. A thousand vineyards and flocks left untended. A thousand women wailing on my doorstep. You have a wife, Uriah? Yes, sir. She will come to my door in tears. If I am unlucky. No, it is a certainty. In wartime, the best are always the first to die. Then her tears will be tears of pride. You are too young to know much of women and too brave, whereas I am a coward. A coward, sir. My men go into battle singing an old song. Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. That was years ago, when I was captain of a hundred like yourself. I was not the king. You will serve me better if you live, Your Honor. Come, George. <clears throat> Remain seated. Continue with your meal. I will return to Jerusalem in the morning. O King of 
Judah and Israel live forever. The Pharaoh of Egypt sends greetings to his beloved cousin. The Pharaoh bids me prostrate myself before the great king. And to present this humble token of Egypt's regard. The king of Israel warms himself in the sun of the Pharaoh's regard. My beloved cousin, the Pharaoh probably hopes that I'll cut my throat with this. Nathan, the prophet of God. God walk with David. It is his custom to walk with Nathan. God looks with favor on your plan to bring the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. Excellent. But as to your intention of building a temple to receive the Ark, he has commanded me to say this to you. Thus speaks the Lord. Should my servant David build me a house to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, even to this day, but ever lived in a tent. Have I ever, in all these years, demanded that a temple be built for me? Now, therefore, I say to David, I took you from the pasture, from guarding your sheep, to make you shepherd over my people, even over all Israel. Yes, yes, I understand. God sees no need of a temple. Is that it? That is his word. Very well, I leave such decisions to you. To God, sire. Whatever you like. You may take full charge of the arrangements to bring the Ark here from Baal, Judah. My father, will you hear my petition? Abner, my son, you need not beg for an audience. You promised me as the heir to Israel all the vineyards north of the Mount of Olives as far as the borders of Ephraim. Yet you have given the large vineyard on the Gibeon Road to Absalom. Did I? Only last month you said it was mine. Yet Amnon claims it. I demand only justice. And what does Absalom demand? Justice, too. Then no matter how I decide, I am unjust. The vineyard belongs to Amnon. Thank you, my father. Come with me. Try to understand my problem. Amnon is the heir. He has been anointed. If it became known that I favored you, it would weaken him in the eyes of the people. We both know that he needs all the strength that we can give him. We both know he is not fit to be heir. That I cannot help. You could anoint me in his place. Even if I wanted to, I am bound by the law. With our people, the law is everything. It is in their bones. It's only one vineyard, Absalom. I'll give you your choice of my own holdings. I want only what is mine. Here, take this. It was worth 20 vineyards. I expect to see you here. Does my presence displease the king? Of course not. You're always welcome. If the sight of me is so welcome, why haven't you come to my chamber since your return? I had much on my mind. Yet you found time to greet your otherwise. I was the first. And now I'm the last. If you had been with the others, I would have greeted you too. You remain aloof by your own choice. There was a time when you thought well of my aloofness. I make no objection to it now. Do as you please. How graciously you give your royal approval. Well, your sarcasm is wasted. We both know that royalty is a fraud. It was no fraud when my father was king. I've never denied that Saul was every inch a king. And his successor, every inch a fraud. I will not argue with that, either. Do you think 
that hanging his spear on your wall will make you royal. Michael, please. I have messages to read. Oh, I understand. I am dismissed. The shepherd's son is dismissing the daughter of Saul. I am to go and sit with the concubines. They are my wives. And you are my wife. Is that not enough? Why did you marry me, David? Why? Because I loved you. You lie. You have never loved anyone but yourself. David, meaning beloved. David, the beloved of David. Whatever you say. My love was wasted. You had no need of it. Is your memory so short? I had great need of it once. I begged you on my knees, but you deserted me. You refused to follow me into exile. You even dishonored your vows and let your father marry you to another. Against my will. You can say so. I cannot help thinking that real love would have fathered a stronger will. Then why did you take me back? You might have guessed. Without Saul's daughter at my side, the northern tribes would not have acknowledged me as king. By taking you back, I made Israel one. <laughs> Michael, we're past the days of our passion, love or hatred or anguish, even cruelty. Why should we torture ourselves? We have to go on living, Michael. There is a house over there, under that big terrapin tree. You know it? Yes, sir. The house of Uriah the Hittite. Uriah the Hittite. He's a captain with the army. Yes, I know him. Does he by any chance have a sister? No, sir. He has a wife, a Hebrew woman of Benjamin called Bathsheba. Bathsheba. But during my visit to the army, this Uriah's gallantry was called to my attention. 
It's been in my mind to reward him. Perhaps in his absence, his wife could accept the reward. I'll send for the woman in the morning, sir. No, send for her now. She shall dine with me tonight. Yes, sir. You're not eating. I dined earlier, sire. It is my custom when I am alone. As a soldier's wife, you have good reason to hate the king who keeps your husband from your side. The king does what he must. His needs are the kingdom's. Not all of them. His wine is Phoenician. I find it mellower than ours. It has the blandness of the sea air. Have you ever visited the coast? No, sire. I lived for several years among the Philistines. The cold people like their sea. We Hebrews are of the desert. We breathe its wind and our blood runs hot with it. Our emotions are fierce like the desert wind. We worship our God fiercely. We love fiercely. We feel sorrow fiercely. Even the lesser sorrow is like the absence of a loved one. Has Uriah been away for long? We have been married seven months. Of this time, we've been together six days. A poor return on the hopes of your betrothal. You are generous indeed not to hate me. I had no hopes, sire. I first saw Uriah on our wedding day when my father brought me to his house. Then six days is the sum total of your love? Of our marriage, yes, sire. One of the vanities of kings is that they think virtue can be rewarded with a bauble. Our God must laugh at the spectacle of unvirtuous kings hanging bits of rock and metal on virtuous men. for virtue. Now you understand why I sent for you. My understanding is not necessary, sire. Why not? You are the king. Is that all? Well, leave the king out of it. Think if any man would be content with such an answer. What other answer can I give, sire? You have sent for me and made known to me your will. What else is there for me to say? In Egypt, that would be enough. There, the pharaoh has certain rights he can command, but I, even if I had the right, I've never used my power to take anything by force. All that I have ever had has been given to me, freely, without restraint. Even Israel, I refused the throne until every elder of every tribe had come to me and begged me to take it. It's been a kind of pride. My pride, never to force myself on anyone. So I said nothing to you until you told me that there is no love in your marriage. Yes, you told me that. And so did Uriah. His dream of glory is his wife in tears. You'd better go. I don't know, keep that. It's only a stone, but you lend it beauty. She is a fool. When I looked on you from my terrace tonight, 
I knew that every future moment spent away from you would be a moment lost. Yet he's found only six days for you in seven months. The perfume of his beloved is the stink of war. Does he think that a man was made only for the agony of battle? Does he call that manhood? Is he no blood, no heart? Now go. Be thankful that I am not feral. At least I can console myself with the thought that your modesty matches your beauty. Perhaps you would prefer truth to modesty, sire. Before you went away, I used to watch you every evening as you walked on your terrace. Always at the same hour. Always alone. Today I heard you had returned. Then you knew that I... That you would be on your terrace tonight. Yes. I had heard that never had the king found a woman to please him. I dared to hope that I might be that woman. Why are you telling me this now? Why not before? Because first, I had to know what was in your heart. If the law of Moses is to be broken, David, let us break it in full understanding of what we want from each other. No, please. I'm not finished. There are women you could send for and send away again. I am not one of them. What do you want? To please you. Have I not made it plain enough that you please me? I'll never send you away. If that is what you want, never as long as I live. No, David, that is not all I want. Think not of this one night, but of all the days and all the nights to come. Think if I can give you what you need for as long as you live, as your wife. But you're not free. If I were free, a king is not supposed to need anything. Only a fool would suppose that. Oh, well, then. Friendship. I had a friend once, but I destroyed him. The others who call themselves friends, I... I never see their eyes, only the tops of their heads as they bow to me. Their hands are extended to me, but palms upwards for favors. Even my own sons. Will I see your eyes, Bathsheba? You will see them. And my hand will be in yours. That much is easy, David. I'm only a man, Bathsheba. I need someone to understand that. I need the kind of... Understanding that only one human being can give to another. I need someone to share my heart. The man I watched from my window was not the king, but a man whose heart is well worth the sharing. Shepherd boys learn early about life.
Did you, David? Did I what? Learn about life early. Before I was 12, I knew almost everything there was to know about life. And death. At 12, I'd killed wolves. At 13, a man. Tell me. Not about the killing. Tell me about the boy you were. Couldn't be of any interest to you. A woman is interested in everything about her man. Particularly in what he was before she knew him. Well, there's not much to tell. I was a shepherd like thousands of others in Judah. You slept out under the stars. Did you dream, David? What did you dream about? <laughs> Surely a man is entitled to the privacy of his dreams. Then they were of women. Naturally. A whole procession of them. And every one of them ravishingly beautiful. I'm jealous of every one of them. It's been a dry year. The shepherds had driven early to the wells. Once when I was a boy, we had a year when even the wells went dry. By midsummer, we were slaughtering sheep, saving only the ewe lambs. That was the year that I fought the wolves. Tell me. You know, they've been made desperate by hunger. I fought them for eight hours with my slingshot. In the morning, six of them lay dead. And you were only a boy. <laughs> well, I was quite a hand with a sling. Here, I'll show you. May I try your sling? Now, that tree, watch. think that you can do better. Did you really kill Goliath? After seeing me with that sling, how could you doubt me? <laughs> Was he truly as big as they say? Well, I will admit that he grows a little bit bigger every year. mother. She's caught in the brambles. Ah. Give you some help. Thank you, sir. Now let's clear those hind feet. Ah. Oh, no, use both hands.
fought for the king. David? Not him, son. For the king. King Saul. It was in his last battle. There, at the Mount of Gilboa. It's peaceful now. Good grazing for the flocks, though we lack rain this year. But that day it rained blood. Yes. I saw the king die. Saw him fall on his sword when he knew the battle was lost. Tell me, did you also see the king's son die? Jonathan. Yes, sir. I did. You see that rock that juts out from the face of the mountain? The big one with a son on it. Prince Jonathan stood there with a loyal friend on each side of him. He fought there the live long day. His friends went down, but still he fought against tens, then against hundreds. They overwhelmed him. Those Philistines and their brass and heathenish helmets. Ah, it was a black day for Israel. The king gone, Jonathan gone. None were they to take their place. Yet Israel found the king in David. Saul was king. Jonathan should be king today. Here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, king. Kindly. David. Come. It's getting late.
mighty fallen. In the midst of the battle. Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother, Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful. Passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen? And the weapons of war perished. I received your message. Am I in time? Yes, sir. Even now, the caravan approaches Jerusalem. Look, Bathsheba. The Ark of the Covenant. The shrine that has traveled with our people through all their wanderings. I'm bringing it here to its proper home. Get in Abishai. I'll go down to meet Nathan. You'll take Bathsheba to her house. I beg you! Mercy, I beg you. For you to cast the first stone. An adulterous sire. She betrayed her husband in the arms of another. She was judged and condemned under the law. Go. Take her home. Nathan? God's design is a strange one, Nathan. Consider how this box of wood has outlived the flesh that made it and preserved it and venerated it. A pity that it is mute and blind and cannot tell us of our ancient dead. Of Moses on the mountaintop, of Miriam and Aaron, of Joshua at the walls of Jericho. No, sir! 
Do not tempt the thunderbolts of the Lord. His dwelling is not to be profaned by unconsecrated hands. To touch it is to die. As you say, Nathan. to what they have seen, that the people may know the will of God. The time is not right for the entrance into the city. Unhitch the oxen, that a tabernacle be erected on this spot. Let the ark remain here outside the walls until God has signified the appeasement of his wrath. Bathsheba, you shouldn't have come here. I had no choice. My news would not wait. David, I bring you trouble. Our secret is no longer a secret. Who has learned it? No one yet. But soon all will know who have eyes to see. I'm sure now of what I have feared this past week. I am with child. Beloved. No need for tears. You bring me only joy. What man would not be happy to learn that his wife will give him a child? I am not your wife. You are my only wife. Please, beloved, do not be afraid. I am not afraid. Soon enough, we must all go down to Sheol. My tears are for our child who will never see the light. Bathsheba, listen to me. You will not die. The law says that I must. They would not dare. I am the king. The Israelites have had kings for less than 50 years. They've had the law of Moses for hundreds. Then I will give them their kingdom. You and I will flee into Egypt. No, David. Your life is marked out on a certain course. Even you cannot change it. It is God's design. There is another answer. Uriah. Uriah is a soldier. Soldiers die every day in battle, and not always by enemy hands. No, David. Even our love could not bear the burden of such a crime. The crime lies in the chance that I was born a Hebrew. In any other nation on earth, Uriah's life would be forfeit. It would be no less a crime. If I sent for him, told him everything, we both know what he would say. Yes, honor is everything, charity nothing. For the sake of honor, blood must flow, lives must be ruined, humanity denied. I can 
can see Uriah now, hurrying to the gate, eager to be the first to cast a stone. Sire. What is it, Abishai? The orders for Jaya, sir. Send it now. I may want to add to the message. Yes, sir. There is another way. Perhaps it will solve nothing. But at least it will gain us time. Uriah can be made to believe that the child is his. But he has been away almost a year. I will send for him to report on the campaign. He'll be here in Jerusalem one night, perhaps two. You called me your wife. The law calls you his. That is not worthy of you, David. It tears my heart to suggest such a thing. It is your life, beloved. Your life. It is shameful what you ask. There is no shame too great. No act so vile that I would not commit it. It would save my love. since we've seen you at the palace. I've been in Judah, sire, tending to my vines. And do you expect a good yield from your vines? I have no reason to be dissatisfied, sire. In such a bad year. You're to be congratulated. I should like a word with you in private, Uriah. I'm at my king's service. 
will not keep you long. You must be eager to go home. Your wife. You say the attack is planned for the day after tomorrow. Yes, sir. Job is confident that it will meet with success. He promises you rubber within a week, sir. With your permission, sir, I plan to return to camp early tomorrow so that I may lead my hundred into the battle. As you wish, Abishai will have dispatches for you to carry. But if you desire to remain in Jerusalem longer... My only desire is to serve my king. I might believe that. But you have a wife. My wife is nothing, sir, beside my duty. Sit down, Uriah. They say she's very beautiful. As women go. A woman does not always share her husband's devotion to duty. Have you ever tried to think of things from her point of view? No, sir. But supposing her wishes and yours come into conflict? A woman's wishes cannot conflict with her husband, sir. That is the law. The law. The law can only control what we do, not what we think. What does your wife think, Uriah? I do not know, sir. Is it possible that you believe that she does not think or feel? A woman is flesh and blood, Uriah, like us. Perhaps even more so, because we give her so little to think of but matters of the flesh. In all our history, only a handful of women have been permitted to write their names beside the men. Miriam, Deborah, J.L., perhaps one or two more. A woman's occupation is her husband. And her life is her love. But if her husband rejects her love, if he puts another love before it, if he denies her the only meaning that her life can have, is it not understandable if she seeks a meaning for it elsewhere? With another man? Yes. If she does, she breaks the law. But if her husband feels pity for her, under the law, he is the one who must condemn her. Then it is doubly his duty to be sure that the law is obeyed. Condemn your own wife, Uriah? Bathsheba? <laughs> but that is not possible. But if it were possible... I would not hesitate to do my duty, sir. You would force her to suffer the most horrible of deaths. Let the mob drive her like a dog through the streets to the city gates. Watch the cruel stones strike her flesh. Let... Yes, sir. If she had broken the law. I've kept you too long from your bed. You may go. Sire, will you grant me a boon? What is your wish? When Abishai prepares the dispatches, let him say this to Joab in your name. Set Uriah on the forefront of the hottest battle, that he may serve as king to the utmost of his ability. I will consider it, Uriah. My thanks, sir.
are up late, David. So are you. I thought I might be of comfort to my husband. It's a terrible thing to know that your beloved is in the arms of another. Do not trouble to lie. You see, I know your secret. Yours and the Lady Bathsheba's. You know nothing. The lady has servants. Servants tell things to other servants, and they in turn tell them to their mistresses. So the daughter of Saul concocts a fantasy from servants' gossip. Bathsheba's condition is no fantasy. And the child she carries is yours. Oh, my husband. I guessed at once why you had sent for Uriah. Only David would have thought of it. A clever trick. Worthy of the son of goat herds. Get out. You cannot save Bathsheba now. Your scheme has failed. Uriah has not been to his house all night. Even now, he sleeps here in the palace with the officers of your guard. <laughs> Sire, forgive me. I have slept late. I told you to go home. I ask your pardon, sir. I could not go to my wife. Why not? It's a matter of my own worthiness. Perhaps you will consider this foolish. But when Job told me I was to come to Jerusalem, I swore an oath on my sword. I swore that while the army still slept in tents, while robbers still stood in defiance of God's will, I would deny myself the comforts and the pleasures of my own house. I would keep myself clean for battle as if for entering the tabernacle of the ark. I'm sorry if I have offended my king. If the dispatches are ready, I will go. Sire. Dispatches for Joab, sir. Dispatches. Shall I give them to your uh No. There is an additional order. Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. It is his own wish, Abishai. Even his own words. that all? No. I will not add hypocrisy to my other sins. Even if Job should understand what I intend, I cannot ask him to share the burden of my guilt. Here is the order. Set your eye in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire from him that he may be smitten and die. Yes. When it is finished, seal it and give it to your eye. Yes, sir.
bring great news. The walls of Rabba have been breached. When we left, there was fighting in the streets of the city. Joab bids me urge you to come to Rabba with all speed to receive the surrender of your enemies. And our dead? Our losses have been heavy, sire. Of the captains of a thousand, Abimelech, the son of Jerobiel, and Heled, the son of Ikesh. Of the captains of a hundred, Hezro the Carmelite, Egal, the son of Zelik, Hittai, the son of Ribai, Abiel, the Arbathite, Eliam, the son of Reuben, Shammah, the Haradite, Uriah, the Hittite, Bani, the Gadite, Asmaveth, the son of Eli, and many more are wounded. How did Uriah the Hittite die? There was a mistake in the order, sire. Uriah advanced too far into the breach and was cut off from his command. When you have eaten and rested, prepare to return to Rabbi. I will ride with you. Sire. Lady Bathsheba's servant is waiting for your answer. Go to Bathsheba. Tell her that Uriah is dead. Help her to prepare for our marriage. At the end of her month of mourning. Will you not go to her yourself? No. speaks the Lord. I will withhold the rains and cause the fields and vineyards to dry up and the flocks to grow thin. I will waste the land with drought, the people with famine. Yea, I will smite Israel for its sin against me. Woe unto Israel. Woe unto my people who have sinned. What sin, Nathan? The Lord has not vouchsafed to me its nature. But evidently, the sin is great, thus to incur his wrath. Does it take so much to make him angry? That soldier who laid hands on the ark, he was only trying to be helpful. It is not for us to question the ways of the Lord. I question nothing. Yet the sun was hot that day. The man had been drinking wine. All were excited when the ark began to fall. Is it not possible that a man might have died naturally from other causes? All causes are of God. We've had droughts before, Nathan. I'm buying grain in Egypt and Philistia. There will be enough for everyone until the rains come if I have to empty my treasuries. Now, what more can I do? Is there anything else? Yes, sire. I have sat in the gate and listened to the people talk of the king. What do they say? They say that David is no longer David. They say that he neglects his duty, that he is often away from the city. When he is here, he has turned his face from his people. Petitioners are sent away from his door without a hearing. In hard times, it's natural that some will complain. Complain, yes, sire. But not talk openly of overthrowing the king. Explain yourself. The hearts of the Israelites are turning after your son. It's difficult to imagine poor Amnon winning anyone's heart. Not Amnon, your second son, Absalom. Boy? Every day he is at the gate seeking those you have turned away. To these he says, Oh, that I were made a judge in the land. 
that all may come to me and receive justice. Confine yourself to the affairs of God. Leave the affairs of the kingdom to me. Sire. Oh, Abishai, I have orders for Joab. The king forgets that he too is a servant of the Lord. Priests are waiting. I have been waiting these days and weeks, waiting for a word from the one who called himself my lover, for a sign that all of his promises were not lies. Beloved, Do not I... call me that, even the word is a lie. If you still loved me, you would not have avoided me. You would not have left me in darkness. Alone with my fears. You know that I was called to Rabbi. It is a week since your return. They are waiting. Let them wait. There will be no way. I will not try to justify my behavior. But even if I have earned your hatred, you know why the wedding must take place. more easily find courage to face the stones of the mob. If our marriage is no more than an act of charity on your part, then say so. If I have lost your love, tell me, and I will trouble you no longer. I am not a beggar, David. Beloved, it is I who am the beggar. I beg your patience. If you love me, say no more. Take my love on faith. It is yours. It will always be yours.
my lady. The king should be called if he would again see his son alive. Call him. your presence. The child is better. No, sir. Physicians can do no more. They say you will die. I know. I have known it these seven days. I have lain in sackcloth on the earth. I have fasted. I have tried to pray. My prayers were only words going out into emptiness. I fell on no ears but my own. from Egypt has arrived. Shall I send him away? No, I will go down. The time for grieving has passed. Will it bring my son back if I mourn for him? No, I shall go to him. Not return to me. for his cousin and for the people of Israel. But alas, the Pharaoh's storehouses are empty. There is barely enough grain to feed Egypt. The heart of the Pharaoh cannot bleed, for it is bloodless. The storehouses of Egypt are full. My sacred Osiris, I swear to you, I speak truth. Dog of Egypt, you lie. And your master lies. Expected. Charity is not to be found among the virtues of those who make gods of vultures and hyenas. Now go! Nathan, the prophets of God! I come on a matter of justice, sire. Hear and render judgment. You may speak.
There were two men, one rich and one poor. The rich man owned great flocks and herds. But the poor man had naught but one new lamb. He reared it and it grew up with him and his children. It ate of his food and drank of his cup. And it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a wayfarer to the rich man asking meat. But the rich man did not take of his own flocks to feed his guest. Instead, he took the poor man's one ewe lamb and slew it and prepared it for the wayfarer. What is your verdict upon this man? He shall restore the lamb sevenfold. The lamb is dead. It cannot be restored. Then the man deserves to die because he had no pity. You are the man. You have made me pronounce sentence upon myself. Very well. It is done. And there is no appeal. It is the will of God and I accept it. Gladly. It is not his will that you should die, David. Worthy or unworthy, you are his anointed. Through Samuel, he chose you to lead his people. Your labors in his behalf are still unfinished. But you cannot escape the punishment of the Lord. I have not escaped it. My son is dead. His justice is still unsatisfied. You have paid for your adultery, but you have also killed. You have taken up the sword and slain your fellow creature for your desire. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. You shall know the hatred and ingratitude of your own flesh. Brother shall turn against brother and son against father. The history of David's house shall be a history written in blood. You tell me nothing new. I am content. Even so, the tally of the Lord is not paid. The woman has been denounced. She also must expiate her sin. She has lost her child. Is that not enough? Bathsheba has sinned. And she must render payment according to the law of Moses. Uriah's death was my act, and mine alone. She was a faithless wife. Faithless only because I made her so. Could she deny the king? When I called her, could she refuse to obey my commands? No, she would never lie for herself. And I will not lie for her. But even if she sinned, she has done no evil. She came to me with love and tenderness. She lifted up my heart. She has brought no evil with her. She has brought adultery and murder. She has brought the drought and the famine. She has brought the wrath of God upon Israel. They know the law, and so does David. Yes, I know the law. Where are the accusers? Under the law, they must cast the first stone. Where are those who will say that I knew Bathsheba before our marriage? Who will dare to say it to my face? So there are no accusers. You have none. find it in my heart to blame you for what you do. But you, Absalom, my son, have I given you cause to hate me so? 
Go, David, and bring Bathsheba here to face her judges. You have made her a queen in Israel. It is not fitting that she should be dragged to judgment by the people. <laughs> Horses. Bring them to the gate in the garden wall. Yes, sir. No, not that way. They'll be watching. Go by way of the terrace. We can be out of the city before they know that we've gone. Sire! The palace is surrounded. We'll call the guard. Surely my own bodyguard can be trusted. Go! Go! cannot fight against the will of God. A God who punishes the guiltless. I am not without guilt, David. Now I know how Uriah died. I think I really knew before our marriage knew and put it from my mind. I lacked the courage to face the truth. My guilt is as great as yours. Greater. Because I let you bear the burden of it alone. I killed him. I wished him dead. God sees into our hearts, David. I am ready. God, I cannot let them take you. I cannot let you die. David? Yes, love. In all our time together, you have never played for me. Something from your boyhood. When you were a shepherd. my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me 
in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. and mercy. When I wrote those words, I believed in such a God. I was only an ignorant shepherd boy. There was no one to teach me about God. So I taught myself. I saw him in the hills, in the trees, in the miracle of the birth of lambs. I felt his mercy when the wolves had fled and my flock was safe, when spring broke the grip of snow and ice, when the cool wind blew after the heat of the day. I saw his splendor and the flowers blazing on the hillsides, the stars burning in the sky, and knew his hand in everything. Then I wandered from him. I tried to find him again. I had lost him. Somewhere in Saul's court. Or when I roamed the desert in exile. Or in the camp of the Philistines. His image paled in the lights of the cities. And his voice was drowned, quarreling scheming of the ambitious and the mighty. And now Nathan has found him for me, not the God of my boyhood days, but a God without mercy, a God who thinks only of his justice. So you must die as the soldier died when he tried to save the ark from falling. He put his hands on the ark like this. You shall not die. Take your stand at this door. If anyone tries to enter, cut him down. You go to the right door. Who is left? Go in the wall. You go to the stairs. Who go to the head here. Where is the woman? He is not coming. He is the king.
You have heard the word of God. I have heard the word of Nathan. You have told me that God demands justice, that I will believe. But I will not believe that he would condemn a helpless woman for another's crime. Where are you going? To the tabernacle. If God is what you say he is, if this is truly his justice, then let him speak for himself. Will you go to him in anger? He has shown me nothing but anger. He has turned his face from me. It was David who first turned his face from God. Once there was a David who knew how to pray, who sought nothing for himself at the hands of God, who found his strength in faith alone. If that David still lives, his God will not deny him mercy. Thou God of my early youth, hear my prayer. Let thine eyes, which alone see clearly, fall upon thy worthless servant. In all things have I failed thee. My life is a waste. Crimes are many and terrible. To my sons I have bequeathed the evil that is in my blood. I have led my people into misery and want. I have used thee with ingratitude and betrayed thy trust. I have been a faithless shepherd. I am dust in the sight of thine eyes. I am less than the meanest creature crawling in the earth. And yet, O oh God, I am also thy creation. Take not 
thy Holy Spirit from me. Thy Spirit, which abode with me in the wilderness. I ask nothing for myself, O oh God. By my sins, I have put myself beyond the compass of thy forgiveness. But lift thine hand from thy people who suffer for my crimes. Forgive them the sin that is not theirs, but mine. Let the land thou gavest their fathers flow once more with thine abundance. And let Bathsheba live to praise thy name, testify to thy mercy, show her the loving kindness of thy heart. Cleanse her from sin. And let thy punishment fall on thy servant who has earned it. Look not on the sinner who comes before thee, but on the boy he was who loved thee and who would have died for thee. Make my heart as his. Let the boy live again in his innocence. Grant him thy mercy and take this David's life. Choose a king over Israel. Eli, I'm a bit of doubt. Shamba. The Lord has not chosen one of these. Any father would be proud of such sons. You do well to feel pride, Jesse. But the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Who is this? My youngest son, David, who tends the sheep. But he's only a boy, a dreamer, a singer of songs. Come hither, David. David, walk in his light, and you shall serve him as few are permitted to serve. of Gazar, challenging us to send a champion against him and so decide the battle. Sire, the men have heard his challenge these 40 dawns. 
They cower like whipped dogs at his voice. Unless he is met, and soon our cause is lost. And is there no one in the ranks of Israel who dares to meet this man? Sire, if Goliath were only a man, any one of us would go. But he's like no man born of woman. His height is six cubits in a span, and his spear is like a weaver's beam. There are dogs indeed to run before one Philistine. Is there no courage in Israel? Sire, courage alone is not enough. No arrow can pierce the giant's armor. No spear can thrust beneath the reach of his arms. He casts his spear a hundred long paces. We call ourselves the chosen of the Lord. Are we to let the enemies of God take Israel because we lack a champion? Sire, I will meet Goliath. Who is it that speaks? Come forward. David, my armor bearer. I will meet him, sire. Sire, Samuel calls this boy the Lord's anointed. If you let him go down to face the giant, Samuel's prophecy can be proved. Oh, disproved. David, you may meet Goliath. No, David. Father, he is my friend. Silence, Jonathan. Go, David. With God, David. <laughs> Is Goliath a dog that you send a boy to meet him? Come closer, little one. Come closer. Come closer, little one. My father, let me go down in David's place. No, Jonathan. Let the Philistine prove the folly of Samuel's prophecy.
man can ever hope to know the real nature of God. But he has given us a glimpse of his face. Oh, <laughs> 